Welcome to The Natural Planet. My name's G, and together we will explore the wonders of nature. Welcome to today's episode where we will be looking at unusual animal friendships. And maybe you can hear the dog barking away outside there. But not to worry, because we won't let the distractions distract us from these 10 stories about surprising relationships amongst animals. Number one is the dog and the cheetah. And this story is from Columbus, Ohio, USA, where Emmett, the cheetah cub, had for the first few weeks of his life pneumonia, which is an illness affecting his lungs. This meant that he required round-the-clock care and attention from the kind staff at Wilds Conservation Center. Once Emmett was better, he was moved to the Columbus Zoo. Now, like people, some animals can get lonely, so having a buddy to interact with and even cuddle is important for their development. As there weren't any other cheetah cubs, Emmett was given a new friend, a Labrador dog by the name of Cullen, and both bundles of fur immediately became adorable puppy pals. And it's not known by many, but cheetah cubs are actually skittish and timid animals. So the young puppy was able to help him become more calm and more confident. And now that the cheetah has grown up, the pair still love playing together with rough and tumble. Although, if I was calling the dog, I would be a bit worried about the size of the teeth that the cheetah now has. That's for sure. I guess that you want to play rough, but not too rough. Story number two is about a tortoise and a hippopotamus. And this story comes from Mombasa in Kenya. When Owen the hippo was a baby, a tsunami, which is a large wave caused by an undersea earthquake, separated him from his family. He was rescued and taken to the Haller Park Wildlife Sanctuary. But Owen couldn't stay with the park's other hippos because they just wouldn't accept the little guy as one of their family. So park staff decided to put him in an enclosure with a tortoise instead. In need of a good friend, Owen followed the tortoise named Mzi everywhere. At first, the reptile wasn't so sure about his new admirer, but soon the two became great friends. Owen even started behaving like a tortoise, eating the same food as Mzi and sleeping at night instead of during the day, like most other hippos. So while tortoises aren't known for their social behavior, Mzi seemed to enjoy spending time with his new hippo friend. The two ate leaves together and went for swims. And occasionally, they even took long naps at the same time. Mzi was even known to stretch out his neck so Owen could affectionately lick him. And I guess in the animal kingdom, that would be a sign of great friendship. Although you don't always want to lick your friends, of course. Number three on our list is the horse and the dog. And this story comes from Spokane, Washington in the USA. Now, Spanky the miniature horse. <laughs> what a name for a horse, eh? <laughs> what a ridiculous name. People give their pets such funny names sometimes. But um, it's probably just a term of endearment. So there we go. Anyway, back to the story. Spanky the miniature horse was a bit of a troublemaker when his trainer first rescued him. The animal would get aggressive with humans and other horses, sometimes kicking them and even biting them. But the trainer knew that with the right training, Spanky could be a happy, well-behaved animal. So to solve the problem, the trainer adopted a tiny Jack Russell Terrier named Dally. The dog was trained to observe the horse as the horse learned to jump and do tricks. 
Then suddenly one day, to everybody's surprise, the dog jumped from a stool right up onto the back of the horse and began taking rides with him around his enclosure. And I have to kind of think that that was one smart little terrier there. Anyway, the two quickly became close friends. And even still today, they travel around the United States performing tricks together for audiences. But not only are they great to watch, but also... Spanky's friendship with Dally has made the horse calmer and happier and has greatly improved his interactions with humans and other horses as well. And perhaps this is a great example of how just one good friendship can change everything in your environment. Perhaps it's all just like that Beatles song, I get by with a little help from my friends. Something like that. Anyway, number four on our list is the llama and the sheep. And you know, let me tell you a little secret. I once wanted to have some llamas, but it didn't work out. And that's probably a good thing. Anyway, to the story, which is from Los Angeles, California, the USA. Felicity was a sheep who was severely mistreated until she was rescued and taken to the farm sanctuary. In her new home, the Barbados black-bellied sheep never really bonded with the other animals there and spent most of her time alone. Until, that was, she befriended a goat named Claire, that is. Claire herself was rescued around the same time as Felicity, and the duo became pals. But after a while, Claire began to spend more time with the other goats and left Felicity sadly alone. But luckily, in Claire's absence, a llama named Yoda stepped in to look after the shy sheep. And I'm here trying not to make ridiculous comments about the names of the animals. Um, I'll I'll try to be quiet about it. Anyway, Felicity and Yoda enjoyed going for walks along the hillside, grazing in the fields and napping together. Felicity even enjoyed tucking her little body beneath Yoda's larger one when she felt shy or scared. Just like a child, I think, hiding behind her mother or father, I suppose. So as the two lived and played together, Felicity gradually became used to her new home and also less nervous around other animals and human caregivers. And today, she's as happy as a sheep could be living in her home from home. And so to number five on our list, which is the cat and the emu. And this story is from Te Horo in New Zealand. Now, sometimes cats have a reputation for being unfriendly. You know what I'm talking about? They're sort of solitary, isolated creatures. They tend to like to do their own thing. But not Kitten the Cat, who was a longtime resident at the Free as a Hawk Refuge. The kitten was known for the way that she nurtured and treated other young animals. Now, kitten's owner thinks that that's because when she was young, she was really well cared for. And so now she thinks all animals at the sanctuary need looking after in exactly the same way. And it's not just kittens that the cat looks after. She also cares for lambs, possums, and even birds. And most recently, the feline has been caring for a baby emu that hatched at the refuge, where the striped pair spend most of their time snuggled up together on a comfortable couch. And it has even been known for the kitten to groom the emu's long feathers while she sleeps. And I think that it wouldn't be unusual that if you saw a cat licking a bird that the cat might have other ideas on his or her mind. Mm. But it's great to see that animals can break down barriers as well as humans. Number six on the list is the pup and the goat. And this story is from Cumberland, Maine in the USA. Now Lola, a tiny Maltese Chihuahua mix, (laughs) I think I got that right, was struggling to make friends at the Sunflower Farm Creamery. But then she met Princess Leia. (laughs) and Ladybug, her soon-to-be best friends. But the strange fact is, apart from their names, that they weren't dogs. They were actually goats. And so the trio quickly became known around the farm as the Triple Squad, and are now seen to be inseparable. Princess Leia and Lola 
follow the farm's owner, Hope Hall, and her family throughout all their daily farm chores. The little puppy and the playful goats chase each other around the hen coop and jump off hay bales before settling down for a snooze together. And why not? Because after a morning of running around, you're going to need to have a little rest. Still with me? Good. Let's look at number seven, which is the alpaca and the cat. And this story is from Alberta, Canada. When Lacey the alpaca was born, her mother couldn't feed her. So the farm's owner stepped in and began bottle feeding the newborn animal. Lacey wasn't always the tidiest eater during her mealtimes, but the cats on the farm didn't complain. They began to hang around during Lacey's feeding times, hoping to lap up any milk that dripped onto the floor from the bottles. Soon, the cats began spending time with Lacey even when she wasn't eating, and at night the cats snuggled up with the alpaca to keep warm. Then, during the day, they'd follow her around the farm, playfully chasing her, before napping together on the front porch. And so what began as stealing slurps of milk turned into another example of a fantastic friendship. Next, it's the deer and the rabbit, and this is from Buffalo, New York, USA. One day, a local wildlife rescuer got a call from someone saying that a fawn needed help. She thought it was a mistake, because baby deer are typically born between May and August, and not in the late autumn. But sure enough, she found an orphaned one-day-old fawn in desperate need of care. Leandra named the baby deer Pumpkin and brought her home. But she wanted Pumpkin to have an animal companion to interact with. But all of the other fawns at the farm were so much older than Pumpkin, and many of them were ready to be released back into the wild, and they didn't want to play. So that's when the rescuer adopted Chunk, a laid-back rabbit. I wasn't sure if it would work, she said. But when she introduced the two, Chunk immediately hopped over to the fawn for a snuggle, and that's all it took. And they were soon best of friends. And it's great to see animals making friendships across different breeds and hey maybe humans can learn from animals what do you think maybe one day moving on to number nine it's the dog and the chimp and this is from liberia in west africa princess the dog was so wild that no one ever thought she'd be adopted but after just a few months of kindness and training with jenny and jimmy desmond she became part of their family And so when the Desmonds moved to Liberia, a country in West Africa, to rescue and rehabilitate chimpanzees, Princess the dog went with them too. And now she loves spending her time wrestling and playing tag with the chimps. Did you know baby chimps played tag? It's true. Just the same way the kids play tag in a park as well. It's quite interesting that. Anyway, the dog Princess acts as their protector barking at animals that get a little too close to his friends. Now, some of the chimps are in bad shape when they get to the Desmonds because they've been treated pretty badly at their previous homes. Oftentimes, the chimpanzees will arrive skinny and depressed, and the Desmonds have to give the animals around-the-clock care. And this is where Princess the dog steps in. Because when the Desmonds can't be there, the dog is always there to look after the needs of the other animals. The Desmonds say that she's a great friend and that she has transformed a lot of the chimps from shy and sad to happy and energetic. And the best thing of all, well, is that it's always playtime. And yep, that was my favorite part of school too. But moving on to the last on our list, number 10, this is the rhino and the lamb. And this story is from Kampama Private Game Reserve in South Africa. Now, Jerti, the rescued rhino, was in need of a companion. His caretakers at the Hodsprut Endangered Species Center had tried to pair him with other animals, but they just couldn't find a match. 
And so enter Lammy, the three-week-old lamb, who hadn't bonded with anyone either. When the staff put the two animals together, Lammy immediately took to the rhino, cuddling up to him right away. Following that, Lammy started trailing the rhino everywhere. And simply said, they became best of friends. But perhaps the most crazy thing is the rhinoceros has started imitating the lamb's hopping movements. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a rhino hopping like a lamb? (laughs) Must sound like little earthquakes. Wow. Anyway, that's it for our 10 fantastic animal friendships. And I think we've all seen examples where maybe a cat is friends with a rabbit or or a dog is friends with a cat or something like that. But it's nice to know that other animals can get along together as well. And so I hope today's presentation has been interesting for you. I hope you learned something. And if there's a topic about animals or the natural world that you'd like me to look into, drop me a line and let me know. Remember that you can always like, share and subscribe for more information. And that's it for today. Take care. Speak to you next time.